Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first coffee and questions. My name is Carmen Cho. I am the vice chair of the Vancouver School Board, and I'm here this morning with Janet Fraser, our board chair. We want to first acknowledge that we are here on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and for this we are very grateful. Thank you, Carmen. And trustees value their connections in the community, and we thought we'd take this opportunity to directly address some questions that we know are in the community. Thank you to everyone who has shared questions with us. We have put them into themes and um, we'll try to get to all the points that were raised. If you have further questions, please reach out to your teacher, your principal, to your liaison trustee, or to myself and Carmen as chair and vice chair. This meeting, this conversation is being recorded and will be posted on the VSB website. So Carmen, you have the first question? I do, yes. We received a number of questions around hygiene, hand washing, and cleaning. So first I want to say that from the very beginning, the health and safety of students and staff has been the most important thing. We have been following the guidance of our provincial health officer and we will continue to do that as we move forward. Over spring break, all of our facilities received a deep cleaning and right now we have custodial staff and school-based teams on site to ensure the highest levels of cleanliness are maintained. As we look to, towards returning to some type of in-class instruction, we are going to be figuring out how we can maintain safe physical distancing, and we will be looking at all of our facilities in terms of what is needed to maintain hygiene, and that does include sinks, faucets, hand sanitized stations, and soap. So all of that work is currently underway now. Okay, thank you. We've also got questions about the seismic mitigation projects. How will these be affected by the COVID-19? And what is being done to address and mitigate any problems that arise? So a key priority of the Vancouver School District, and this is true for many years, is to have all students in seismically safe schools. And we appreciate the funding that's being provided by the Ministry as we have a number of projects underway. As uh, Carmen said in the previous question, student, staff, family, health and safety is always our top priority. And that is true on these uh, projects and on the construction sites as well. We, there may be delays due to getting materials on the site or to having to reorganize the construction sites. But, uh, and, those, and if that does happen to cause a significant delay, that will be communicated to the school staff and to the school families. But we're not aware of any uh, changes to our schedules at this time. Um, as students move to um, temporary accommodation, we will uh, maintain health and safety parameters there. The uh, question of how students will be uh, using school buses is going to be addressed. We will look for guidance from the provincial health officer and then implement that in our district. Thank you, Janet. Um, the next question is regarding technology. How can we make sure that schools get the technology that they need for intermediate grades? So at the very beginning of this, one of the things that staff did was they reached out to families and they asked them, how are you doing and what do you need? So how can we support you? And one of those specific questions was, do you have the technology that you need to be successful with online learning? Those families that indicated that they did not, schools have been lending out laptops and iPads, and we have been helping provide access to Wi-Fi. So if there's a family out there right now that does have a need for technology, please reach out to your principal as they are still doing that work and we are happy to support families in that way the best that we can. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, I have a number of questions about assessment and marking and how this is being handled for the uh, rest of the year. How um, will that change if some students are able to return to the classroom? How will end of year reports be distributed and what will happen in September as students transition to a new grade? So the continuation of learning and assessment during the COVID-19 response is uh, really important. It's important that students stay engaged with their learning and it's important to maintain connections with their school community. Teachers have to, you know, teachers recognize that this is a new situation for everyone and they're adapting the curriculum to focus on the key things that students need to move to the next grade and how to deliver those in 
deliver those key pieces in a way that will resonate with the students. And they're focusing on three things, learning together, because this really is a stronger, newer relationship between the teachers, the educators and, your, and families, learning in a new space and learning for all, making sure that we um, are inclusive of all students in every classroom. Students will continue to receive a report card in June and in the format that uh, you're used to. Um, assessment will be based on the progress before spring break and the marks will not uh, be below the mark that could be attained at that time. Students can continue to engage and improve their marks and teachers will use their professional judgment, judgment to assess student progress based on all the factors in the student's life at this time of learning. There is information available in the tips for parents section on the continuation of learning hub on the district website. Um, tips for parents on how to support your students in their learning. And if you have a situation that you think is uh, causing a difficulty for your child in their learning, please do reach out to your teacher or your principal. And you know, our teachers have been so uh, amazing in their response to this new situation. So thoughtful in how to switch to online, online learning, so um, engaged in their own learning so that they can help students to learn. So there are many options and that's a great conversation to have with your teacher. Yes, and building on that question, I had somebody asking, is there a plan for bridging grade seven students as they go into grade eight? And we understand this is an extremely exciting time for children as they move from elementary school into high school. Um, I would say that we aren't, it's not going to look the way it has in the past, but as Janet said, um, all students that were on track to progress to the next grade will do so. So nobody will be negatively impacted by online learning. But how we can acknowledge grade seven students and support them in their move to grade eight, I would say one of the things that might be a good thing to do is to contact your PAC. PACs provide a lot of support at the end of the year in terms of graduation and ceremonies. And I would talk to your PAC, is there a way that we can celebrate or support grade sevens as they move to grade eight? Maybe one idea would be creating a video from some former students about what grade eight looks like. Maybe the PAC at the high school could create a video that's a welcome video to new students coming in. So I think reach out to your PAC. There's a lot of very thoughtful and um, really talented people that can help us in that way. Okay, thank you, thank you Carmen. Um, Continuing on the theme of student learning, uh, there's quite a number of questions about online learning and the number of instruction hours. Um, we're hearing from people that the uh, screen time is too little, screen time is too much, you know, students are struggling to meet deadlines or students don't have enough work. So again, this is a unique situation for every student and every family and the teachers are responding as best they can to support every student in their learning. We are, uh, as a district, in a team's environment. Um, this is a um, software that we engage, that we have as a system in our district before the COVID uh, emergency, and it will continue to be the environment we work in uh, in the future. A lot has changed, a lot has happened, has been rolled out much quicker than anticipated, and you know, we do understand it's a learning curve for our teachers, for our support staff, and for our families. Um, and we hope that uh, everyone is getting used to it and becoming more familiar with how to how to work. Um, there's a concern about uh, students falling behind um, in this new period of online learning because, as I said before, teachers are adjusting the curriculum. And as we start the new school year, teachers will be very aware that this is not a typical, will not be a typical September startup and will um, you know, learn about the needs of their students in their classrooms and how to build the grade that they are working into. Um, I'm seeing if there's any points I've missed. Um, We do offer classes through the uh, BLM, Vancouver Learning Network. Um, this is not a substitute for in-class instruction, but it is an alternative that is available to uh, students and information about those programs are available on our website. Great, thank you. So we've received a incredibly large number of questions about the return to school. So obviously this is top of mind for everybody. Um, so after Premier John Horgan's announcement last week about the phased in approach 
to returning to classrooms. Our district has turned to looking at what that could look like for us. Of course, always being mindful of the provincial health officer guidelines. Uh, as we do this work, we will be working with our partners, with teachers, with administrators as to what that looks like. We will also be communicating out the plan to communities. I would say at each school, it's best to look to your principal because they are going to be familiar with what it's going to look like at their school and it might be different from site to site. And finally, on Friday, our superintendent, Suzanne Hoffman, put out a video that spoke directly to the phased in approach to returning to in-classroom instruction. I would encourage everybody to go to the BSB site and take a look at that video. It does look like it will be kindergarten to grade five students that are returning in the beginning. The return would be voluntary, so nobody will be penalized if they do not attend in-class sessions, and the continuity of learning will continue for those students that do not. Things that need to be worked out are items such as lunches, what those could look like, pick up and drop off, how do parents do that safely, and maintaining physical distance. But I want you to know that our district is turning their heads to that work now, and plans will be communicated as the information comes available. Good. Thank you. We have a number of questions about international students and travel restrictions. So, um, you know, the continuity of learning, student connection, student engagement is important for all of our students, including our international students. Uh, we know that some international students have uh, chosen to stay in Vancouver, but some have returned to their home country. And the, you know, the teachers can still reach out to those students and um, so they are able to finish the school year. Moving forward to the next school year, and, you know, any families will have to um, honour the uh, federal travel advisories and follow provincial health uh, officers guidelines about travel at if they wish to return to Vancouver or come to Vancouver to participate in our programs. Thank you, Janet. Uh, one of the questions we received was how will children with special needs be accommodated and what will the new normal look like in September? So we certainly understand that uncertainty brings anxiety with it. And we want to ensure all parents that we are developing a plan to ensure that all students are supported, especially those students that have higher learning needs. Um, what will be particularly important is the school-based team, your principal, your teacher, resource teachers, and support workers, as they know the unique needs of those students better than anybody. And they will be integral in making a plan to ensure that those students are supported. So we want to assure you that the work is underway now, and we are developing that plan. Okay, we have uh, several questions about access to belongings and supplies at schools. And uh, every family should have been contacted by their school to um, allow the students to go into getting materials um, from their classroom desks or from their lockers. Um, I know a number of schools are also making learning, learning packages to distribute to students in certain grades. So if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, do please reach out to the principal to make sure that um, that's possible. Um, there's also questions about, is it possible to have other supplies from the schools? What about li uh, library books um, and other things that may support students? So that's a, probably a question that's best addressed by teachers and principals at each school. So um, reach out to them if you have a specific request. We are doing all that we can to support our students, particularly around providing technology and, and uh, helping with Wi-Fi connections. But there are also uh, you know, hands-on materials that uh, assist students in their learning. Thank you, Janet. The next question is about summer school. Will summer school be face-to-face -face and will summer school be provided to elementary school students? Um, in response to COVID-19, we have had to change what summer school 2020 is going to look like. So it will be provided only online. It will be provided to grades 10, 11, and 12 for academic completion courses. The length of the term will be six weeks, and it will only be offered to students that are currently enrolled in BSB schools. So again, we do have more information on summer school on our website, and I would encourage people to take a look there if they want more details about that. So a question that is uh, really important to our grade 12 students and their families is, um, what are the plans to graduation? And as is the common theme with the questions, health and safety is the top priority um, for our students, our families and our staff. 
and it was a difficult decision by the district to cancel in-person graduation ceremonies and dinner dance or banquet celebrations but this is in line with the um, guidelines for, for gatherings as typically our graduation classes are several hundred students and um, as we know from the phased return to um, the new normal we're not in a position to make plans for that size of gathering at the moment. Different opportunities are being explored to recognize and celebrate this important milestone. One of them will definitely be a pre-recorded video presentation for each school uh, for their graduating class. And there will also be an opportunity for the uh, students to come to the school to pick up their grad items and be honored in the school building. As the physical distancing restrictions change with time, there may be other opportunities, but it's too early to be able to speculate on what things could be at this time. So we did receive a number of questions about our long range facilities plan. Uh, prior to the end of spring break, we had completed phase one of our build to learn engagement and at our last facilities planning committee meeting last week, a summary of those results were provided. So anybody who wants to take a look at that, you can go to our website. Phase two, we were really hoping to have in-person workshops and now it looks like we aren't going to be able to do that. So we have asked for communications to help us come up with a strategy as to how we can still meaningfully engage to get the feedback that we need. We believe that we can start with our stakeholders and have that feedback completed by the end of June and then look to engage with parents and with the broader public after that. I just want to tell people that we don't aren't at the decision making process yet, so we are not looking at school closures, at relocation of programs, or any of those types of things at this moment. Uh, we do plan on being transparent in our process as we move along, and all of the information will be presented to the facilities planning community as it's made available. Um, also want to wish I've had a question about how does physical distancing change the evaluation of space in our schools and I think I would say it's too early for us to know that and we would again look to the provincial health officer for guidance as well as to the Ministry of Education as to how that will unfold. But we do we as we aren't making decisions we are just laying the foundation and getting information that we need for future decisions and we are also working through the 17 recommendations in the draft long range facilities plan. So as we get that work done, we will present the findings of that to the facilities planning committee. Okay, so thank you, Carly. And thank you for joining me today and uh, helping to answer these questions. And, and actually Carmen came up with the idea that uh, we engage in a popping conversation. So thank you. Uh, and to those of you watching, thank you for, thank you for spending part of your morning with us. We invite you to stay engaged in the work of the board. Uh, committee meetings have restarted online and details about those meetings are on the DSP events calendar. Um, this is a new situation for everyone. We are uh, doing our best to switch to online um, communications and it's a learning process for everyone. We appreciate your feedback on what's working well and what's not looking uh, what, where we can improve and um, as Carmen has said in one of her questions here, you know, the superintendent has put out a uh, video every week of addressing different aspects of the COVID response so that is another uh, another way to get information about what's happening in the district. Yes and uh, thank you this has been I appreciate all of the questions that we received it was great to see so many people sending us questions and we understand there's lots of curiosity out there so we do want to say thank you. Uh, we want to thank our parents. We understand that you are balancing work life and family life in a whole new way and that it is incredibly challenging. We encourage you to reach out to your principal and to your child's teachers if there's any way that they can support you. We also want to say thank you to all of our students. You have shown incredible resilience. We know you want to get back to your classes and see your teachers and your friends again. So we want to assure you that this is not forever. Also, a big thank you to our senior management team for your leadership throughout this. You have been measured, you have been thoughtful, and you have guided us in a way that has been uh, truly remarkable. Finally, to all of our staff, 
we want to say thank you for all of the work that you are doing. It has been an incredible undertaking to see what we have done in such a short period of time. We have fundamentally changed the way we deliver education. It has required tremendous teamwork, and we thank you all for doing this work with compassion and with curiosity. Thank you all so much and for spending your morning with us as well. Please take care of yourselves and be safe. Thank you.